Hey, welcome to the Blue Jay Banner Post Game Show. We are live at Let It Fly, despite the weather. It's packed down there. Yeah, it's crazy, right? It's people crazy down, down there. People are in here for hoops, here. for NFL, and to celebrate a Jays win. That's why they're here. Uh, before that, man, it's like it's probably so cold they just need somewhere to go. No, I'm playing, bro. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow, man, Josh. I'm gonna rip you a new one today. I, I owe you. Well, I owe you. Why do you owe me? Because man, I've been nothing but nice to you. Huh? No, you've been, you been nice, but, you know, you, you do. I'm playing. I'm here, man. It is cold outside. It is. You it know? is. Hey, welcome. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks so much. Make sure you hit that subscribe and like button. It helps us out so much. Also, use that chat feature down below. We've already got a chat in there from Martin that we'll address here in a few minutes. Thanks, boy. If you come to the right show, the number one postgame show for Creighton basketball, Number one, after a great game, it was fun. It's gonna be, we're going to have a lot of good talk. Josh says he's going to come after me. This is great. Yeah, Number am. two, <laughs> boy, if you come to the right day for guests, we've got uh, Coach Assistant Coach Ryan Miller going to join us here in a little bit. That's awesome. He's a great guest, and he'll be breaking it down. And the one and only Mr. Baylor Shireman will be here later. That would be kind of cool, man. Um, I, it's good to – haven't talked to him in a while on here, and uh, I want to hear his perspective. I've got some questions for him. Yeah. There, that's better. I can hear you now. Um, at any rate, join us. Um, hold on here. I got to do one thing. Get rid of that. There we, we gonna go. We going to do the super, super chat? We got it going. All right. That's good. So anyway, uh, yeah, use the chat feature on the YouTube. Uh, chat away. Let us know. Let's, let's go right to Martin here. Martin says, gutty win. St. John's is so much better under Patino. I got to admit right here, I'm wrong. Thank you. I was, I was wrong. about to say, you know where I was going with this. I was wrong. Oh, man. I was wrong. Oh, man. I said, man, I don't know. I don't think. I think All they're right. going to struggle got, this year. I don't got to rip you this. I don't got to rip you. You, you, you just <laughs> don't. You just don't. I guess, you know, I mean, I've watched Patino for a million sure. years, right? No doubt. But you don't really notice it until he's playing your team. His effect. I feel yeah, I like that. he had us scouted down he to did. a T. Right, yeah. But also on top of that, uh, not even just what he has accomplished, just his character and expectation, bro. Like the, the level that, like I was right there yep. on the sideline, the level that his players play at because they're afraid to fail the coach's expectation, that's why they're at the level they're at. Yeah, you know? like he, he's old school, and maybe that's what they needed. They you did. You know, they huh? had yeah. some newer school. I mean, Mike Anderson's not a – new school guy he's an old school guy yeah but i think they come in there now with these you know let's face it kids have changed even from when you played right 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. so they 100%. come in with a little bit of okay we got to back off a little bit and then yeah Patino just comes in this is who i am exactly and that's the thing like he doesn't come in with an aura like ah, i got 11 new guys no winning is an expectation yep. this is how we gonna do it we played Creighton today, and we're going to swing away according to the standards. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Martin Ellis said, player of the game is Kalk. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't respect that. that. I respect that. In I mean, except for the free throws. Yeah, that was a huge yeah. part of the wow, game. Wow, let me say. I have a couple other issues. Wait, who said that? Who said Martin, that? Martin still. Oh, okay, still Martin. Chat. We appreciate you, bro. He said, unsung. So, so Martin, why, why are we even here? Martin just rattles all this oh. off. Who the player of the game is, right. who the unsung well, is. Well, let's start with the player of the so game. So, he said, unsung is Miller with sneaky rebounding and Farabella with assist. That's every game. We have <laughs> we have Fran and, yeah, and Mason. No doubt. But, yeah. They I consistent agree with him, bro. I agree with him. Wait, what did he say first about player of the game? Uh, he said, Kalk Renner? Yes. All right, now the reason why I can respect what he's saying there is because until we start, like, going to him or going off of him, we didn't have momentum mm -hmm. at all. There was an unsung hero play that I got for myself, but, like, we shot barely 20, like 22% from the three, or we shot something low from the field. I don't know the stats off the top of my head. But, Martin, you are right. We went through Kalk Brenner to a degree. He did his, miss some free throws. We wish he played better. But playing through him allowed us to win. Yeah, I mean. I agree. We got to get into more. Yeah, 100%. Really, yeah. You know? But he's got to be more aggressive, too. I mean, yeah. Like, I think, like, and I get it. He's he, got to be tougher. Yeah, like. He, he hasn't, and I'm not just talking this game. I'm talking the whole season. No, you're right. Like, I mean, the whole, like, getting into my head when, uh, Things, you know, when I'm not playing my way, I, maybe that's a personality type thing. I feel that. But we still got a ball game to play. And, like, 
you still got to play through it. You still was a defensive player of the year. You still are a focal point. You still are, I think, our best player on the team. You got to play through that. I'm not going to say he's soft, but he got to be more tough. I agree with you on that, 100%. Yeah. I, I, you know, the one stuck out to me, too. He had this guy boxed out. The ball drops just on the other side of the wind, and he just stood there. Like, you got to get that ball. Yeah. You got to get that rebound. That no, was a huge right, rebound right. in the game. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, and he's got man. Th- he just shot the free throws like he's afraid he's gonna miss. Yeah, I. You got to get that ball over the rim. But he's the type of player where he thinks about sometimes three plays ago, of something sure. that, that he could have did better. And like I'm saying, like you, we don't got time for that. You just yeah. got to make it at the end of the day. And I don't even think it was a thing about ah today just wasn't our day shooting it. It's like nah, man. Like you got to lock in. You got to hit your routine. You got to make them free throws. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Got to be accountable. Yeah, I'd just like to see him be a little tougher, and, and obviously there's times we, you know, we got him the ball, but there's other times where we missed him, you know? Yeah, a lot, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like Baylor had a few where I feel like he could have threw it to him where he missed, uh, or I feel like he could have took a, a few extra dribbles and made plays. But I also, I, I think he was probably trying to get himself going. So there's yeah, a lot absolutely. of things that could have happened, man. But um, playing through Cog on that last stretch, it did help us win the game. Yeah, absolutely. That, that he had a huge block. Oh my huge God. block at the huge, end. Huge block. And to be honest, it was their game to lose. They had three tips at it before the, the buzzer went off. So I can't even say that we did anything to help them lose. Yeah, and I'd have to say it was Fran that was in there battling. Yeah. You know, for that rebound. For the rebound, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then um, they had two. I don't even understand why they're They had guys. one tip, and then they had another shot, which I don't think would have counted. I think that last one was The late. last one, no. Yeah. But the second one was yeah. the one that probably could have put them over the Yeah. Team, you know. Yeah. And um, Do you feel like um, – like, yeah, we shot it bad, you know, but do you feel like that was the difference of why they played well, or are you crediting St. John's uh, to just how they play and playing tough and making us shoot well, in it? Well, I, I think it goes this way. There, there's a lot of things going on here, okay? Mm-hmm. Number one is we still haven't adjusted the fact that, and if you watch other Big East games, it's not just our games. They are letting them play. For sure. It, every yeah. game in the Big East is really physical. Yeah. And we maybe haven't had that in the past. Right. And we need to adjust because they do. didn't change it. They're not changing at all. It's only And uh, the next couple of games we got is only going to – I'm not going to say get harder, but it's going to be even oh, more. Oh, UConn, you don't think they're going to be physical? Even more. Oh. You know, like – yeah, like, the, like you know, like the the – the standard is set on how the refs are going to call the game. Yep. I actually like them calling it like that because you actually allow both teams a chance to actually play. You know, I don't really like when the games are, like, decided by the refs. And I, and I know it sounds weird to say, like, a foul is a foul, call a foul. But I think sometimes just playing through it and just letting the game work itself out is, is better than calling every single foul that should be called. You know? Yeah. 100%. Now, to that point – Mm-hmm. And this was brought up with the guys I was at the game with. It just doesn't seem like Trey gets any calls. Let me think about that. I think the type of style of play that uh, Trey has as a player, he likes a little, for Trey to be at his best, he likes to go downhill and he needs a little space and room. I think that by the time that he makes his moves, I think he got, maybe it's, a, I think it could be a muscle mass thing. I think that he's athletic enough that he can get those calls if he actually go through them versus alter his shot. So I don't necessarily think – I think some can – I'm going to say a few, not some. I think that he just got to play through that and go through the defender and through the rim to get the call. Like, there's a lot of adjustments with him. I don't think every time that he gets a no call, it should be a call. <laughs> That's just me. That's just me personally. Yeah, I mean – That's just me. You know, like the type of player he is, like he's always at his best. Like he gets he gets comfortable. He get him going downhill. If he just actually try to, I think, try to actually like go nose to the goal like he's trying to dunk it, he'll get that call. Yeah, I, I get I get that. Uh, there was a couple times today I, I was with you on that. Yeah. Like like that's all. It was like oh we should have just went went in. in. That's then all he I'm was saying. like yeah. went going back because that's the thing when you when you teeter that line and you give Trey those calls, it can actually go against our favor. Because yeah. the same things were could have been called on other end, too. All right. Hey, welcome to the show. If you're just joining us now, thanks so much. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button for us. We want to thank our sponsors, uh, CareMinders Home Health Care, Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. And Godfather's Pizza, Pizza Pie Piled High. 
great day great day this weekend great weekend for godfather's pizza just sit at home yeah oh like my wife she great month <laughs> she ain't moving for a week till man. it gets warmer man yeah it's so listen you know what but first of all let's say that let's shout out to the crowd Great oh, job, the, everybody the that yeah. showed up today. For sure, yeah. I went outside and was thought about not coming. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it real. I walked. Yeah. I, I, tried, I did some other cleanup on my drive. I walked in and I said to my wife, "Man, the stuff I do for cream." Yeah. I woke up this morning, seven o'clock. Went outside at eight. Snow plowed the whole entire driveway and our neighbor's walkway. Came in the house, got dressed, came back outside, and was like, ah. <laughs> but I still can't. I'm just You're being the man. honest. You're the man. Yeah, it was good. The, uh, the crowd was great today. So, the yeah, and I I think, you know, some people have complained about the atmosphere. I know you've been working hard on the floor been, to try and get people in. I've been I trying. I thought today was probably our best atmosphere of the was. season. You know why? When you were in, it was two-thirds full. Because cause we played hard. Like we well, earned we that. did. We earned number that. one. We did. Number yeah. two, another person said, well, all the diehards were there today. True. That's facts. Yeah. Number three. You just get the refs to make a couple bad calls. Crowd gets into I it. I know. Yeah, no doubt. It was perfect. Everything. Is, I yeah. mean, the basketball gods aligned yeah. for this game to be what it was. Make sure you use that chat feature if you're watching on YouTube. We've got tons of them. Let's get to a couple of them. By the way, if you're just joining us, uh, Coach Ryan Miller will be with us and Baylor Sharman. Ooh, that's going to be fun. This guy excited for that. <laughs> I am. Baylor's, Baylor's yeah. the man. He is. I like his, uh, I like his First of all, they said, we've got to watch Patino's post game. It was amazing. So we'll do that later. That'll sure. be great. Um, let's see. Uh, got Rob. This was a must-win game in terms of having a chance to win in the league. Still concerned overall because more athletic, physical teams give us problems. Please work on breaking the press. I thought we did okay with the press today. I thought we did too. I thought that. I uh, mean, it's it's not yeah. it's not as easy as fans when they're yeah, just watching. No doubt. Yeah. I mean, Creighton handled the press pressure. It, the press wasn't a problem, and we're not afraid of a press. It's just we just had to uh, handle the ball to get through to execute. The press didn't. It, the press was just a part of the game. It wasn't nothing that was like that of much of a difference maker playing against our team. A guy we talk a lot about here, Stephen Ashworth. Ashworth. Yeah. He teased me today. He teased me. Really? It was better. Yeah. <laughs> he was two for two, took two great shots, and then threw up a couple of questionable ones. And what, I'm like, oh, what, man, what, what dude. Were the, what were, tell me those. I like when you talk about him. I like it. No, well, yeah. he's kind of off balance on one. The other one, he kind of rushed it, and it was really off. I mean, it wasn't even close. Was it and a the three? third one, he kind of looked like he just threw it up there, didn't shoot it. Yeah, then I he came you. back yeah. and hit a big one. I probably so was, I was doing, like, okay. my, doing my thing. But what you got to understand about him, people, too, he's handling, he's taking that ball up against the press. He yeah, and Trey the whole sure. game. So right. when you're saying, man, Trey looks a lot, that takes a lot of energy. It does. And also, like, I feel like part of their game plan was to take Trey out of the game. And yes. Like, I mean, like, remember last game in Providence, they keyed on Baylor? This team keyed on Trey. And – it, it, it didn't look that much difference with everybody else. It did slow the game down, obviously, within points and things. It kind of made Baylor, like, uh, to me, I feel like he kind of shy. Not Like, he was a little silent. It's kind of like you got a partner in crime, you know, like I feed yeah. off you. Baylor you know? wasn't on from deep today. No, he wasn't. But he still had the rest of his game. No, he played, yeah, exactly. Like, the, the, the tools that he has is going to always make him play a complete right. game. I just felt like. About those threes, from my perspective with Steven, I thought that I liked that he took them for the fact that if you looked at the, the stat sheet, like Trey wasn't getting them up. So somebody had to hey, step up. Hey, he was in double figures today. Yeah. And he didn't turn it over. Uh, well, I, I don't know who's turnover they gave it to Trey or him, but that one pass he hit Trey, he, he threw it behind Trey, so then Trey lost handle of it and ended up traveling. It was in the second second half. I'm, I'm drawing the blank only because. Trey, Trey was cutting in the middle, and he threw the pass. Like It's like a quarterback. You say, oh, man, that receiver should have dropped it. Yeah, but if you throw it out here, he catches it. You I'll know, yeah, same, yeah, yeah. same deal. It was I, kind I, of the I'll same deal with that. Um, let's, let, let's get into some of our features. Uh, the first one is Unsung Hero. It's uh, sponsored by Care Miners. They're our title sponsor here at Blue Jay Banner and Let It Fly for the postgame shows. Uh, when you're in need of care for an injured, ill, or senior loved one, reach out to Care Miners Home Care. A, a great example is today, like uh, this week, like mm -hmm. with all this weather going on, mm -hmm. if you've got an injured uh, loved one or maybe a senior loved one, 
wouldn't it be great to know that care miners is taking care of them in this weather um, their agency is comprised of certified caregivers who have many years of experience uh, you'll receive versatile flexible and customized care and trust me it will give you such peace of mind you may not need them today but you might want to look into it for down in the future so give them a call 402-532-1383 or go to caremindersnebraska.com uh unsung hero today i got two of them well sure you do i'm curious to hear how you feel about my first one you want to know who my first one is let's hear the first one coach mack it's about time that somebody got a tech or did something on behalf of the team to show the passion and the energy to get the team going like well that was baylor that got the tech oh well baylor i thought it was coach no no baylor got all right well he's my unsung hero in that (laughs) for real bro like Sometimes you I'm with you. Like I'm with you. You, you need somebody to get something yeah. going. And now Mac was working that same official pretty yeah. hard during the timeout. In fact, right. almost the whole timeout. Then the timeout was over, and he was out on the floor again with that official. Yeah, like and that, and I think it paid off because we got some calls. It did exactly. So like that tech, I applaud Baylor for getting that for sure. Like obviously you never want to get a tech, whatever. But like he's my unsung hero uh, for how much that meant for his passion to try to win a game. The second one to me is Fran. He got a random steal. And what was cha- that? I don't know, man. I didn't know he had that. I, I, I didn't know he had that. Wait, in his, you know. They popped up the bench points. It was 29 to 2. And I said, those two were friends. And my buddy goes, yeah, and who would have thought that on a yeah, steal? Exactly. Yeah, like that steal not only like got the crowd back in it in that moment. It also got the, our team. Well, none of that. That was four points in like five seconds. I'm telling you. So that, that was a big turnaround. We were down yeah, nine. Boom, right. we we're down five. And, and I know the tech was untimely, but like that passion, but also that steal. Yep. That's what stood out to me. I, I agree with you. I agree on both of them. Yeah. I, I think we give it to Fran so much. I think we give it to Baylor today yeah. for, for what he did. Yeah. Because if you look back, it's kind of a turning point, right? It was, bro. I'm trying to tell yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, some things don't make the stat sheet. I, I, I would say this about Coach Mack. I, I, I think people sometimes are too hard on about the timeouts. Oh, tomorrow he should but call today timeouts today you should have taken – you when? You could just – when they went on that run to push it to 10 or 9 or 10. Oh, word, word. I mean, you could that just was weird, sit here. That was weird. You could just see the team falling apart. We made a bad turnover. We had a poor defensive stand. We let the ref, uh, we let the contact get in our heads a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I just would have called a time yeah. out there. Everybody settled down. Yeah. You know? Now, we played through it. We ended up winning. Yeah. So, what now, can we say? The, yeah, and but I, I feel that. I think, you, and usually I'm like, Mac likes to save his timeouts. One, number two, he likes to manage the game. So if those uh, under 16, 12 timeouts mm-hmm. are coming, he doesn't like to take one. Yeah, no, for sure. I think um, he could have called a timeout, but the fact that he didn't, I think it was great to play through that segment because, like, I was just worried the game was going to get away from us there because it looked like I, it might. I, no, you're not wrong. No, 100%. You're, uh, yeah. not, you're not. I don't think and, you're and, not wrong. And the opposite yeah, side, Patino was taking timeouts. Yeah. At, strategic moments yeah right yeah and like and there was one time they got the ball and it didn't look like gonna take time out he saw two passes and immediately called timeout said we're we're out of sync here we yeah. need to reset yeah mac just wanted to play through like like just kind of like feel. mac does like to play through you know? it there's no doubt yeah. no doubt that's just that's so you're, his you're, you're not wrong like he could have called a timeout but um the fact that he didn't equal effect that's how I see it. I, I just saw they just showed Kim English on the screen. <laughs> it was just so funny. Like, people, like, overreact. And I, I'm not saying they were wrong, but, you know, when they got off that start, I was like, oh, uh, Kim, Kim English, what a coach, what a coach. They show him now, and you can just see on his face, like, this whole thing's <laughs> falling apart, man. We're losing four in a row here. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no you know? doubt. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're now, they've gone from having a chance to win the league to now being a Wednesday team. So, you know. So, um that's our unsung hero. Good, good call, yeah, Josh Jones. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, guess what? We're ready to go to Coach's Corner. It's going to be sponsored by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. Uh, they are the Bank of Blue Jay Banner. Check them out. Two great locations, Pierce Street over in Elkhorn and then just north of the Schwab headquarters. Uh, they've got a great new location in Elkhorn. Totally upscale. Gives you that cafe feel. It's just unbelievable and their customer service at both locations are outstanding so check them out today go to ecboldbank.com they take the headache away from banking and you will be glad you did and as they said they're the bank of blue jay banner 
And it is time for Coach's Corner. Got my man, Ryan Miller here. Congrats, <laughs> How you doing, bro? Coach. Good to see you. Out type of games and found a way to win. Amen. Whew. It's right. hard on my heart, buddy. <laughs> Try being down in the gladiator pit. Yeah, I saw you. Were, you were pretty <laughs> pretty animated as yeah. all the coaches yeah. were today. Uh, we were just talking about Baylor getting a tech. You don't like a player to get a technical, but I we kind of felt like from that point on, we seem to start to get some of those calls, you know? Yeah, every once in a while you see a, a momentum play, and sometimes it goes against you sometimes. So the fans and uh, – the players and the coaches kind of rallied behind it and we were able to get on a little run and get some moment, moment, momentum going our way when it didn't look like a lot of things were going our way yeah missing free throws and missing box outs whatever was happening and they were getting tip ins and you know uh, kind of changed the course of the momentum a little bit and uh you know we we're lucky enough to come away with a win thanks for making it over here by the way oh, i no know problem. it wasn't easy it's not easy out there right now that <laughs> I mean, it's, the snow is all right. You know, I grew up in South Dakota. The snow is all right. That cold? Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's yeah. like you're can going, it, you're going it along, and you think, like, I was walking from the Hilton up here. Yeah. And I was, like, going along, and I was like, ah, this is bad. And you hit that gap between the Hilton and Marriott. I was just like, wow, I'm about ready to go down right here. It, it was yeah. just – it just hits you. And no, it, that's brutal. It, it takes brutal. you away. And to that point, yes, we had a sellout. We had about a two-thirds full, but those fans today that showed up were unbelievable. It was incredible. I mean, uh, you know, the conditions, um, the community being able to rally behind this team, um, making the trek wherever they're coming from. It wasn't easy. I mean, I came down there at 7.30 this morning. It wasn't easy getting down there. And then uh, obviously parking and getting out of your car and braving the cold weather. Um, no, it's really awesome to see the community behind the team. And they were loud today, man. They yeah. really got into the game. I, like I told Josh, just have the officials not make some calls. You get the crowd going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What do you uh, – Mike, I got a question for you about uh, Trey. I know he didn't get it going as, as he normally would like to. Do you, do you think it was more so him just having an off game or them trying to key on him as a player? You know, he has a big bullseye on his back right now. He's one of the best players in the Big East for the last two years. Um, so teams are going to game plan against him. Um, so uh, what my answer is, I guess, a little bit of both. Um, you know, they're going to attack them. They're going to make things hard on them. They're going to get physical with them. Um, you know, us as coaches got to do a better job of getting him better looks, and then he's got to do a better job of finishing and making plays. But, you know, his typical Trey didn't have a great game, and then we need two free throws down Big the stretch. Free throws, yeah. And he gets up there, bang, bang, and, you know, right. and win by one. So I think this year, besides Ashworth, I think he's the guy what wanted the line and clutch situation because he's proven it many, 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 many times. No question. You know? I mean, over the history, I remember a game against Villanova, very similar to the, that game right there at home a couple of years ago. It was last year maybe. Um, same situation. got fouled towards the end of the game, made both free throws. Uh, defense possession. We won a defense possession at the end with um, Dixon missing a shot. I think it was two years ago. Um, but, yeah, you know, that's the guy we won on the line. He's won, He's proven it, and he's been, uh, you know, He's been able to perform in those type of situations. Josh and I were talking earlier. Uh, it's not just we think it's just great, but it's not. When you watch all these Big East games going on, they are letting them play this year. I, I think the league's more physical this year than it's been. How do you think the team has adjusted to that? Is it still a work in progress? Well, that's what I was so proud about today's game because when teams have tried to be real physical with us. See, the first half they went 2-2-1, two, two, back 2-3. Two, they were right, trying to do other right. junk defensive stuff. And the second half, Patino said, scratch that. We're just going to go mano y mano. And, you know, it worked for a little bit. And then we ra found a way to rally at the end. But that's why I was proud of them because it was, you know, chest on chest, uh, body on body, and you had to find a way to make a play. Whether it was a rebound, whether it was a shot around goal, we, I think we shot three or four threes. Three, three threes in yeah. the second half. I mean, they weren't letting us shoot threes. You know, we had a wide open look after wide open look of the first half, and unfortunately they didn't go down. That's part of the game a little bit, but I think they got in halftime and said, hey, we're giving them way too much, uh, too many looks. They're playing, you know, we're not playing that game that we want to play because it's a very dangerous game letting us t take wide open threes. So I think they just said second half, you know, screwed a little bit. Let's get in their face. Let's right. make this game physical. And to our, we went to the free throw line, and we don't typically go to the free throw line. We made physical plays. We showed the ball at the rim. We tried to go through chins at the rim. So some things that uh, we've been working on harping on, especially against teams that want to play us physical and body us and check us all the way down the court like uh, St. John's is doing today. I'm glad you said that because I was wondering, you know, I was just going to ask you next, you know, like, what have you guys been doing? But obviously you've been working on that a lot. Hey, Freddie's not injured, right? No, I mean, you know, just getting the nuts and bolts of things here a little bit and, you know, just – 
Kelk Brenner's playing well, and then we wanted to get maybe a little different look at Jason, see if he could uh, step in and play a little small ball five. But, you know, Fred's uh, he's going to battle. He's going to come back, and he's going to alleviate some more minutes that, down the stretch for us and for sure. go in there and make it happen. But, you know, against them, we, we gave Jason a look, just just a different option, see, see what it looks like to go a little smaller at that position like a lot of teams do. And, you know, he did fine in his minutes. But, uh, no, Freddie's not injured. He's, you know, his knees have been banged up a little bit, and, but nothing that he can handle. So hopefully ne- he hopefully gets his swag back a little bit. And, uh, you know, we had two tough road games at UConn, at Seton Hall. So hopefully he's he'll be uh, very valuable down the stretch. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, it's good to see Ash knock those first two down, wasn't it? Yeah, especially when nobody was really making shots. It's good to see him. You know, he was recruited to come in and make shots and make threes. Right. 40, career 44% three-point shooter. Yeah. Um, you know, we're gonna let him. We're gonna let him fling him up there a little bit, or let him fly, <laughs> I would say. And uh, yeah, you, you know, yeah, use that term. It's a good yeah, no question. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah, yeah. Pun intended. Exactly right. <laughs> we're gonna let him fly a little bit because <laughs> that's what he does. You know, and you know he does from deep, and he has a history of it, right? And there's only a matter of time where he gets in a little groove. I mean, you know, he gives up a little bit of stuff on defense because of the size and probably mm-hmm. his physical nature. So to counteract that, we need him out there making shots and making threes, and and you know, stretch the defense out. Even if he misses a few, which I would prefer he makes them, but. If he misses a few, you're still stretching the defense out yeah. a little bit because you, uh, you have to contest and contain him out there. The other thing we were talking earlier, too, but people don't understand is when, when you're playing a defense like St. John's was, full court, it takes a lot of energy out of guy and him, in between him and Trey. And they're handling the ball the whole time. That that mm-hmm. takes a lot, and he didn't turn it over. I mean, that's 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 yeah. huge. No question. I mean, uh, we only turned the ball, I think, over seven times as a team, which is pretty good, yeah. the amount of pressure they had on us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that was good, and we got to the free throw line a lot, um, which was really good for us. You know, we'd like to get up there and make a few more, but, you know, it was, it was a tough physical game and a game that we needed to prove to ourselves more than anybody that we could win one of those games, and we, we pulled away. Did, was it, were you surprised with anything about, um, like, the, how shall I put it, just the overall scheme of how they play? Like, was there anything, like, I know all year they've been physical, they've been playing up and down or whatever, but did y'all expect them to play y'all like they did? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've coached against Patino-type teams for a, long, for a while. Um, we lost to them in the NCAA tournament when I was – at New Mexico, the year they won the national championship, uh, when he was at Louisville, mm. and then uh, also at Memphis, we played him quite a bit when they're in old Conference USA. So you know he's going to coach a physical brand. Um, one thing I we probably weren't expecting is basically scrap because they give you they try to throw you off balance all the time. They go two two one press back to three zone. Mm. And if you get a high post catch, they'll go match up man, or if you go ball screen, they'll match up man out of their two three. So they try to keep you off balance uh, a lot of times. They were doing that the first half, and so we're getting open looks. And he said, scratched it, that, that plan in the second half. He said, hey, we're just going to go, like I said, chest on chest. We're yeah. going to make this physical. We're going to try to make – we switch some ball screens, uh, but we're just going to make this as physical as we can make the game. And uh, our guys responded and, have, and won a physical game. Now, they didn't come very often with, with doubling on call because that kind of his M.O.? He, he'll, they'll, tra- they'll trap a little bit, but not, not – I think they thought Sariano can go one-on-one with him yeah. um, in the post and just be physical, wall him up, and, and try to block the shots for him. But uh, – yeah, they, they, they will do a little trapping. Um, they didn't trap him today down there. Um, so, we, you know, he did a good job establishing some position. But Sariano is a big load, so it was a yeah. tough matchup. Yeah. He's a lot like Dixon, yeah. except he doesn't he shoot, shoot it as yeah. 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 Yep. yeah, I think he will actually be more of an asset than Dixon if he shot threes like him. Yeah, because he yeah. has a, he has a, he's such a physical back-to-the-basket game, plus he rebounds at such a high clip. Exactly. He's really tough out there. We You know, we – we run a lot of drop coverage, uh, ball screens, and uh, you know we got c- caught in some situations where we call uh, late veers, where that means yep. we're late switch, switch onto the bigs, and you know he's a, he's he's very hard for our guards to get out of there in, in those rebound situations. I think when they when they run uh, early in the second half, I think he 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 was offensive rebounding at a high clip and yep. giving us problems there. But to our guys' credit, towards the end of the game, I mean. When, Baylor and Trey made some really, and, and Stephen Ashford made some really physical plays trying to get him out of there. Their job is not necessarily to get the rebound, is to make sure he doesn't get it. So um, they did a good job of that later in the game. Well, you mentioned big road trip here. This is probably the toughest one of the year, UConn, Seton Hall, back-to-back. First of all, logistics of it, you guys staying out there? Yes, sir. Okay. We're uh, leaving Tuesday. Um, play Wednesday and we're going to stay out east and hopefully come back with a couple wins and then put yeah. ourselves in the forefront of uh, try to win. Well, that would be huge, title, yeah. huge just at least to get one. I know no. we want to win them all, but yeah. yeah. Um, well, we get the first one. We try to get UConn and then we'll see what happens with the yeah. second what one. What have you seen? What have you seen? Yeah, one at a time. Yeah. What have you seen <laughs> from UConn without Klingman? You know, uh, you stay in your uh, – 
you stay in your lane a little bit. So we were really focused on St. John's, but a uh, little bit I've watched. I mean, obviously they're not the same team with Klingon. They're going to space a little more. They're going to play Caravan at the five, and, and they're going to give us some challenges there because we'll have to he can shoot. Yeah, yeah, he can really shoot it, and they've been playing him a little small at the five. But then we'll have to attack that matchup if they do uh, go into Kalkbrenner, try to attack it down there, and then we'll have to figure out our matchups and see what well, we can't have Caravan out there shooting to wide open threes because he's too efficient of a three-point sure. shooter. So. We'll have to uh, pay attention to detail on our, our matchups and, and where we cut, what we're doing, and what we're doing our ball screen coverage is because, you know, I don't know if it's conducive to play drop coverage against Caravan because he'll be out there just raining threes. So yeah. we'll have to figure some uh, schematic stuff out over the next couple of days. So when we go up to stores on, uh, yeah, on so the games in stores, uh, I think so. Yeah, I think stores, it is. is it? I think it I is. I think it is. Yeah, either stores. I think it's this series getting in stores. I wish it was Hartford. Hartford's, uh, you know. A well better venue. Easier yeah. to get yeah. into. Yeah. You, no know, question, but <laughs> you know, it's to drive <laughs> back in the woods to exactly. go to this campus. Exactly. You know, yeah. Wherever the game is, you just got to go play it, though. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Hey, my last last question. Um, at the end, um, it was like we kind of talked about, like, a possession for them to get an opportunity to win. Did they miss the tip the second time it went up or, like? I mean, there was a scrum for the ball, and they, they tipped it, but there was probably a little collision because the ball was flying all over the place. And, uh, you know, they – uh, made a play on the ball. We made a play on the ball. It just kind of got tipped out. But, you know, Coach, give Coach uh, Jalen Courtney Williams and Coach Matt credit. Uh, their, uh, Jenkins was kind of having – was really efficient, pick and roll. And yeah. the last two or three possessions, we uh, we started doubling a little bit. In those, yeah, yeah, yeah. In those yeah. pick and rolls. So they, they, we made a good adjustment there. That kind of threw them off balance a little bit down the stretch. And, and it was able to, for us to get stops. And then we were able to get to the free throw line and win the game. Yeah. You're the man, bro. I All appreciate right, you guys, man. Let's Thanks, go. Man. Let's go get a win. <laughs> right. Thanks, Coach. That's right. Coach Ryan Miller, again, sponsored by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally, and uh, they are a tremendous sponsor of uh, our show here and been a long time. They're the Bank of Blue Jay Banner, and uh, we appreciate Doug Nagard and everybody over there at Equitable. They are huge, uh, huge Jays fans and just want you to join the many who have switched Equitable Bank this year. That's Equitable Bank. They take banking personally, and remember, uh, they always answer the phone in the first ring and their customer service is second to none. Thanks to Coach Miller. Now we're going to segue right into player of the game. I need that, bro. Yeah. We have. Yeah. <laughs> we have <laughs> Mr. Baylor, Hireman Baylor. Congrats, man. My guy, good to see you. Battle out there today, huh? Right. Did you expect them to be in a position they're at in the conference, or did you kind of expect them to be middle of the pack, being a new team? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, obviously they got a Hall of Fame coach, which sure. obviously helps, and uh, you know they have a lot of great players, and they put the pieces together. And, um, you know, like you talked about, they're a well-oiled player, so they're going to be playing well. And they're the team in the country. They're right. The surprise they won ranked coming into today, so. Uh, I think I expect them to be, you know, where they're at, to be honest. All right, yep, me too. Yeah. I, we can tell him. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, we were just talking with Coach Miller and on the defenses. They kept switching a lot, especially yeah. in the first half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the first half, especially like the first eight minutes of the game, we got a lot of great looks, and we just didn't make them. Um, I think, you know, in a lot of games, where if we get those looks, we, we, we could have been up like 22, 22. to, yeah, 22 yeah. to 8, you yeah. know, 25 yeah. to 8. Yeah. And it, they just didn't go in. And then the second half, they kind of said, screw the zone, screw the press. We're just going to match up, man, and, and make it physical because we were just – the first half, we were getting wide open looks. We just weren't making them, and they right. didn't want us to do that the second half. And then, like you said, they were switching everything, making it difficult. So Yeah, especially you. You've been just lights out yeah. this year. And today, you could just tell the first couple shots were yeah. just not – it wasn't there for a lot of guys mm -hmm. on the team today. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like we talked about, you got to be able to win in, in multiple ways. And um, it, was a, it was a good win um, despite not shooting great. Yeah, I think that this game – to me, shows that you guys have a sense of urgency on how to put together a win outside of just hitting threes. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. this, this is that, you know how like players are made, uh, teams in December, they look different in January and February. Yeah. I think this is when y'all start to look a little different. Yes, sir. I, I applauded your defensive effort for sure. Yeah, I would agree with you there. I mean, I thought our defense was, was really good throughout the whole game. Um, and, you know, they pride themselves on, you know, offensive rebounding. And for the most part, we did a really good job of that, so. Kind of a strange college basketball game nowadays because <coughs> they didn't shoot any threes the whole game. We didn't shoot any in the second half. You rarely see that nowadays. Yeah, no, 100%. I think, yeah, sure. you know, 
like our defense is designed for that to, to happen. You know, we want them to shoot a lot of mid-range and go yeah. into the bulk at the rim. Right. But obviously we like to shoot a lot of threes, and they just did a really good job of taking that away um, and, and kind of making us go into the paint and have to finish and, and get to the free throw line. So, We talk a lot about Steven on the show, and I keep telling people, you this, talk dude, a lot about Steven. Yeah. this dude can shoot. No, 100%. And I know I can – the other night when he made that big one, I mean, you guys were all like, yes, yeah. finally one drops for him, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Today it was probably great to see him knock down those first mm -hmm. two, kind of when everybody else was kind of struggling for three. Yeah, 100%. Like we talked about the other day, we got full confidence in Steve, and um, obviously today he played another great game, you know, hitting threes and, and finding some open guys and handling the pressure. Handling the ball, yeah, man. Exactly. Against that pressure. Exactly. So um, he's a great player, and he, he impacts winning in a lot of different ways. All right, we, we got we to gotta talk about this because – he he made you your your technical the play of the game. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, it, it kind of was. <laughs> was. Like it turned things around. The crowd got into it. You know what I'm saying? That was my first ever technical. <laughs> really? First ever. First technical. ever. Yeah. You be talking with your chip, bro. I'm surprised you didn't get like two or three. <laughs> yeah. Real. yeah. But that was needed. Though, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I've was. always told Tim like. There's got to be some – like, I don't be wanting to go as far as, like, saying, man, the team is overall, like, soft or not tough enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what is it that's going to, like, show that they've been really, like, at the drawing board? Mm -hmm. Yo, Tech, man. Yeah. It was it. Was it. <laughs> My mama wasn't too happy, but <laughs> but it was, it was definitely, you know, throughout the game I was just – I really didn't even say that much to get no. it, to be honest. No, yeah. I was kind of surprised. Ego, that, was quick, <laughs> yeah. that was a yeah. quick whistle, I didn't, man. I didn't, I didn't swear or anything, so no. it is what it is. It, yeah. it helped us, honestly. I mean, I've I really seen guys did. do way more than that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, did you uh, ever expect Fran in an open floor to get a steal like that? I mean, not necessarily. I mean, that's not really how we guard jumping passing lanes and 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 turning them over that, that sure. much but you know with their offense they run a lot of like handoffs and flips and pass it ahead and you know I think they kind of just got lazy because they've been doing it the whole game and yeah. you know we don't pressure it and he was able to just jump in front and steal it, which was a big play in the game yeah. so. kind of like an NFL corner just yeah. sitting on that because yeah. he's seen it all game long yeah, exactly. you know that's exactly. kind of what it was um yeah, well, after your technical, yep. we started getting those calls at yeah. the rim. Yeah. So, so I think it was needed. Yeah. yeah Even though Mac yeah. had had a long conversation with that very yeah, official during the yeah. timeout. At first, I thought it was Mac, but he clarified yeah. it was you. I said that's even better for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I know. I was. Yeah, I was kind of excited about it to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. yeah. Hey. So, did your mom actually say something? Yeah, I mean, she was like, "You just can't do that, man." I was like, "I know, mom. I'm sorry." Yeah. But she's not too upset. Where did you but go? But yeah. it worked out. Yeah, okay. I know. That's what I yeah. said. Yeah. If y'all had a loss, she yeah. would have harped on the yeah. Oh, yeah. A loss by yeah. two points or yeah, something, know. you know? know. Hey, so for you, I asked Coach. Um, I mean, his answer was a little bit uh, like Coach's standpoint. Coach's corner understood on scouting and game planning. But as a player, like seeing St. John's and what they did and watching them play and how they played y'all tough, like would you say that they kind of took you out of your game plan of shooting rhythm threes or y'all just was off tonight? Well, I would say the second half they did. Like, we didn't shoot. Did we shoot any threes in the second half? I don't know. Uh, I mean, maybe like one or two. Shot a couple. Yeah, yeah. shot a couple. You had one. I think uh, oh, Steven yeah, might have had yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the second half they definitely took us out of the three-point in the rhythm of the game. But I think the first half we really just missed shots, uh, to be completely honest with you. Yeah, Mason. Mason, who's been deadly, I'm one of the best in the country. Yeah. Was missing him too. I yeah, mean, exactly. Was, yeah, well, oddly enough, the only guy Mason was Calk. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he did make one. Yeah, exactly. Calk and Steve hey, hit those what, two big ones. Hey, what do you think about Calk? Um, like, and I know it's a thing where I mean, he's told me before about like sometimes like he's always next play, but you can kind of tell when he kind of stuck it a miss mm -hmm. some some miss assignment that he didn't do right or mm -hmm. whatever. Obviously, to an, a degree, like I feel like it affected his free throws. Do you feel like it was just uh, inconsistent rhythm, or him just in his own head when he missed? I mean, I just think <laughs> I was. I would say it's probably just a little bit of both, to be so. honest. You know, obviously, um, free throw is a big mental game, like you said, and he obviously missed the first one, and so he's kind of down. We ch we try to pick pick each other up, you know, and stuff sure. like that happens, feed him confidence and whatnot. But I would say it was a little bit of both. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he sure was. He sure was done when he came to the bench. Ever though, yeah. you can just Some tell his body language yeah. is like I that was a great him time him. to put mm -hmm. him down, to sit him down for a minute, uh, reset, and yeah. get going. Yeah, because then he had a huge block. No, he end. did. No, yeah. I mean, huge he was block. big, big for us all game on defense end for sure. I thought yeah. it was also good for you where like your, your your three ball wasn't falling, the teams wasn't falling, but the other aspects of the game where you affected like mm -hmm. it shows. Like I said the other day to you that like you're starting to put together like extra utility parts of your belt yeah, yeah. and it's it, and it and it's effective for the team because yes, I feel like 
without you doing those other things sometimes, I think it really magnifies our forwards mm -hmm. where, like, we can see where, like, if their forwards are getting the best of us, I think sometimes, like, you play, like, a little tweener mm -hmm. uh, ball, and I thought it affected the game. Yes, sir. Uh, and, some of, and some of your huddles and things like that with uh, – um, like with Trout and with Mason, do you guys ever have conversations like from the from the four spot perspective mm -hmm. of like how to pick them up, or do you just stick to the to the guard lane? Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of that is predetermined, like how we're going to guard and how they're going to guard their guy and, and stuff like that with the, the scouting report. Um, I think more of the times when we come into the huddle, it's more about um, what we're doing defensively if we change the coverage or what we're going to run next on offensively. It's not really, um, you know, talking to one person about something. Um, they did. They yeah, did yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, huge road trip coming up, huh? Yeah. There's a yeah. big one, UConn, Seton Hall. Obviously, UConn's first. That's one we're worried about. Uh, now you say you're more worried about? No, that's the yeah. first one we're worried about. That's what I'm oh, saying. We're I not worried. More worried about. I'm about to say Ma Seton Hall can be just the same time. He didn't listen. Seton Hall stop the conference. Yeah, race. Uh, yeah. Exactly. he didn't listen to Coach Miller. Coach Miller says we can only play one at a time. No, 100. Yeah, yeah, but he didn't listen I'm to just, me. I'm just worried about practice <laughs> yeah. on Monday, dude. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, we relate there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all I'm worried about right now. So, so big, big, big road trip. Um, what uh, w going to play at UConn? How's that been for you? Like last year, what did yeah. you what did you experience there? Now I think this game's at stores, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. It is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, we, that's where we played last year, and you know it was just a fun environment. I mean, that's yeah, but it's the basketball capital of the world for crying out loud. I mean, it's <laughs> it's basketball. I mean, the yeah. rims are ten feet. You know, everything. Right. They so put on jerseys yeah, like exactly. <laughs> so um, it's yeah. just it's just basketball a capital of the world. Yeah, Seriously, it's, it's just a fun uh, fun environment to play, and obviously they have a lot of support from their fans and. Um, I'm sure um, the place will be packed, and it's just a fun college basketball game. That's what you that's what you want when you sign up for it. Sure, so. yeah, absolutely. Do you like what what's what's your favorite road trip? Uh, like going back to last none year. Of them. Yeah, I hate being on the road. I'm the same. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, who on your? It's team? not like we get to do anything. Like we're just at the hotel. We go to the yeah, gym. We come back to the hotel. We go exactly. to the and then we fly home. So I just who do you room with? I'd rather be at home. Francisco, Farabello. Well, maybe that's the problem. I need to talk to Fran about nah, that. Nah. You just want to say we Wayne, live together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Come on, this guy. <laughs> so, I'm joking with him. He knows that. So, uh, going back to your football days, are you really happy you're not playing the NFL in <laughs> Kansas City we when it's 25 below? No, I know. We were talking about that. My senior year, my semifinal game um, for football, it was negative one, felt like negative ah. 12, and it was miserable. So, I can't even imagine, like, how they're going through. Like, at, it's at just not enjoyable to play yeah, at, at all. At you know, the highest level in a game that's deciding your future. Yeah. You know, it's got to be crazy. It's uh, miserable. Well, hey, stay warm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hell of a <laughs> game, bro. And uh, have good practices Monday and Tuesday and head on out. And you get to stay out there the whole week. Oh, that's. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's why you say he's dreading it. Think yeah. about it. Y'all got to play it's, there. I think all about that. Then, then we travel, and then we practice, then we and practice, and then we play. And exactly. then we travel back. So, exactly. yeah. yeah. But you can focus on basketball. <laughs> yeah. 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 But then, yeah. then you got a nice long home stay. Yeah. Three in a row. Thank God. Yeah. So, there yeah. you go. So, I'm in. Good to see you guys. Yeah, good to see you all. All right. That's Baylor Shireman. This segment sponsored by Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. want to thank them so much. Uh, and remember, they answer the phone on the first ring. We got to get to... Uh, our uh, worst call of the game. There's several. Mm, we haven't had a lot of games where we've had um, a lot of opportunities. And we got a lot of opportunities today. I think the worst call of the game was a no call. Trey went in. This is the only time that I would say Trey went in and he had an acrobatic layup. It was actually to the point where he could have got an and one that could have made us, uh, I want to say, go up, go up one and hit a free throw. But he didn't make the. the oh yeah, foul. he didn't make. It. Yes, yes, the no yeah, call. yeah, yeah. Like I thought that was the worst call of the game, just because like he literally drove hard as he could, went to the rim. Yeah, I thought there was it. a couple of those. Hmm. Yeah, like like yeah. in the second half, yeah. especially because that was right in front of so, me and I could yeah. see it. And so the double back, I do agree with what you're saying and understand when you say like he can get more calls. But you know, me, I just see yeah. it from a perspective like how athletic he is. Go dunk it more, you'll get those. Yeah, I, I think he's just got to go in, expect the contact, and go in hard to the right. Yeah, exactly. But that call, to have no call, I mean, glad we had momentum in one, but that at least still should have been two, three. The other thing I noticed, too, is 
Patino, like everybody complains about us mm. that we get all the calls, like because we don't foul much. You know, everybody's <laughs> like, well, you don't blow the whistle, so that's why they don't foul much. Patino's teams, I've, not just today, but I've noticed playing so yeah. far in the Big East, yeah. like his, his teams sure. don't get a lot of whistles on no, him. So yeah, that right. probably really yeah. chapped him in the second half when yeah, they got no, into yeah, the double yeah, bonus. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Um, I think. But uh, they were fouls. Yeah. I mean, they were legitimate yeah. fouls. And you could call them, but I think what it seems like to me, the refs know his coaching style. Sure. So they try to coach. Like, sometimes you kind of give honorariums to, like, legends like that. And I feel like they just call the game according to his style. And they let a lot of stuff go that his players do. And then uh, sometimes, like, it throws the game to be unorthodox because uh, on the other end, when it happens to them, too, it's not called either. So I thought there was one, too that actually went our way that I thought was a bad call, and that was shortly after Baylor got the technical on their end. They called, like, an offensive foul, and I thought – Oh, yeah, I agree with that. I was like, no, I agree with that. you're yeah. going to call all, I, the, hey, all the physicality of the I, whole game, and you're going to call I that? I to say it. I said that to a fan. I said that wasn't a foul. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that was a little bit <laughs> – Yeah, but, for sure. All right, there we go. Um – that is sponsored by Godfather's Pizza. Pizza pie piled high. They have abundant toppings, fresh mozzarella, and uh, they've got everything to feed your family. Wings, cheese sticks, desserts, and more. Godfather's Pizza. It's pizza you can't refuse. Check them out today, godfathers.com. Uh, you'll find a location all over the metro area, and, you know, tomorrow might be a good day just to order in some pizza. I know. If, if it's Uber drivers out here, you know, it's – Work, it's bad. It's, it's cold. bad, yeah. It's cold. Even if the roads is clear, it's so cold, I'm not coming yeah. outside. Let's get to some more of our chats here. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see. We got Brandon. Brandon says, I felt like first half we were getting good looks and not hitting them. Second half, he watched the game. more of getting late into the shot clock with as good a looks as possible. I think that's totally a, a synopsis of the game 100%. right there. It is. Of our offensive end, yeah. I have nothing to say to that. And, that, and that's pretty much what uh, Coach uh, – Coach Miller said. Right. Uh, getting back to Rob, I don't think we finished everything he said. He said, still concerned overall because these more athletic physical teams give us major problem. Please work on press break. Uh, oh, we talked about that. The <laughs> press break I didn't think was bad at all. No, it wasn't bad. It's I, just I think the physicality, yeah, I think we still got a ways yeah. to go there, but we're getting yeah. better. If Only thing I would say to that is if every team continually uh, presses and becomes physical, we'll be in a dogfight. Every game we play. Other than that, it was just a part of the game. But, like, we don't really see a press break in the midst of the game like that. Yeah. So, uh, Rob says, Ash was better today. Uh, handled the pressure better as well as Baylor. Baylor's a stud. He matched their physicality. Mason and Bell's hustle, toughness, energy were so important. Exactly. Yes, especially Mason. Man, he comes out of nowhere to get these he rebounds. Does, randomly. Yeah. And just, a big rebound, too. Like, yeah. Wow, I thought he was over, over there, there yeah, you know. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, Brandon also has a really good question for us to ponder. Is Kalk the best big Creighton has ever had other than Benjamin or Silas? You mean stats or you mean – I mean just, just – I patent? think in just in general, is yeah. he the best big man besides Benoit Benjamin and uh, Paul Silas? That's a good question. Great question. That's a great question. From, from um, what I see with my eyes, I say <sighs> Justin Patton. Ryan Kalkbrenner, Gregory Echenico. Well, but Justin only played one year. That's what that I would call. No, I know. <laughs> one and done. That's no, I know, point. I know, I know. But I'm just saying. That, how You can't disqualify that. No, I'm really, not disqualifying you know? from it. But yeah. I'm also not disqualifying the other guys because one guy had one great year. I'm just saying. I would like to see his game expand. He should have stayed. Po yes. He should have. No, 100%. What, till this day. I feel like Justin Patton would have um, – I don't even want to say – it's crazy to say, but he would have panned out longer in the NBA yes. if he would have stayed and matured one more year, Yep, 100%. But the reason why I gave it to him is just because not just – I'm not the guy to say, hey, you went to the NBA, uh, you're better. I think as far as how agile he is, I mean, catching lobs at the rims, he can shoot threes, he can guard the five, he can guard the four, uh, weak side block, defensive and rebound. And just those thunderous – Alley oops, man. I'm they were, to tell you, yeah, they were, they were spectacular. Hand hand, which makes Maurice um, I will say this guard. about Gregory. Gregory, 
got the shaft a little bit because he played with the best player in college basketball well, history. Well, not only that, he played like in them. the Valley. True. Where every time it was a lot like Shaq in the NBA. Yeah. Every time he turned around, they call foul on him because guys would run into him, and yeah. that's not his fault. Yeah. So he was. He would have been so much better, say, if he could have played the whole time here he in the Big on, East. Uh, then he'd have been a mon uh, I think he'd have been a monster. You remember he dunked on Henson from Carolina? Yeah. That showed exactly yeah. if we weren't yeah. in that conference. Yeah. No, the, my, my favorite memory, like, not not specific play, we just talking about but a whole level. game, was the NCAA game in Philadelphia that I was at when we played Duke. Mm -hmm. Okay? They thought Plumlee, pff, Plumlee can because Plumlee eat great. this guy. He ate him up, he did. and that frustrated Coach K. Yeah. Coach K was bitching at the refs at every time out. You didn't yeah. see it because they cut to commercial. Right. He was out in the middle floor. Any other coach in the world, you know how Coach Mack was out there with a guy one time out? Right. He was out there every time out, right. much more animated than that. Right. Like, I, I knew that frustrated him. Like, yeah. we got under his skin because he his game plan was wrong. Right. Like, he was like, wow. Right. This guy's taking it to us. I agree. Yeah, I think player for player, Greg, I think he would do the same against uh, my boy Cock. But um, I think as far as, like, the defensive player of the year type of accolades and stuff like that, I don't know, man. I mean, well, he, would, he's, I know. he was like nah, – you know would what? you say he was a little bigger no, than I, Soriano, I, I, though? I Wasn't Gregory a little bigger I than Soriano? To, I need to quit being nice. No, no. Gregory Echenique is number two. Would, would Gregory, Gregory Echenique is a little bigger. bit bigger than Soriano, bigger. like bigger. wider he was to bigger. me. Yeah. He was Gregory Echenique was dominant. He was mean on the court, and he was relentless on the rebounds. I think that he would be a problem for today's Big East, and I, I agree with you, and I think I'm just being a little bit too nice. I think Justin Patton is one. I think Gregory is two, and I think Cock is three. And you also agree with me that he got the shaft in the valley. He did. Because he'd just turn around he, and get a foul. He was bigger, he was bigger than the conference. It, it, there was nobody that was even I agree, close. I agree. I agree. Like guys were all Rocky size. Yeah. In the valley. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> he made it very easy for Doug to be fifth, sixth all-time leading scorer in NCAA. Well, that's why Doug didn't have to foul anybody. No. Yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> or, or even, well, even yeah. I, I would say not get reruns, but he's one of the all-time greatest rebounders. Yeah. Greatest. Exactly. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Gregory was a monster. Yeah. I think Greg is too. Yeah. Uh, caucus three. Uh, Casey's got a comment. He says, actually pretty amazing that we won with the lineup towards the end of the game. Very small, and we still punch him in the mouth. I think we had... Um, Fran, Fran Ashworth. and Ashworth. Yeah. And then we had so Alexander. And Trey. So we went with three small guards, Baylor, Baylor and, and our five and Caul 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, because Baylor can, guard, can rebound like a four. Uh, I felt like Trey, even though he didn't uh, offensive, offensively do his thing, he did... Uh, do his job. Yes. I, I, yeah, that did help us win the game for sure. All right. Uh, we want to thank all our sponsors, CareMinders, Godfather's Pizza, Equo Bank. So I don't think there's a whole lot to talk about. We all know what UConn is, right? We do. It's not much to say. I mean, I, I think they're clearly right now the best team in the conference. Right. Because Marquette's yeah. taking a step back. Right. And plus with the injury they had, Give Sean Jones. Top, top four. Just, just the way they're playing, not, not, not where they're in the standings. Right. UConn head and shoulders above everybody right now number one okay number two is tough right now it is because you got a lot of teams even though i'm uh, still and you know how wrong i am i was wrong about st john's i still not a believer in seton hall all together respect okay. i can respect that i can respect that so i'm oh, they had a big win today though mm -hmm. at butler um but i think we're number two right now me too i thought we were yep. i feel like uconn creighton uh, then I probably still kind of hedge toward Villanova, Absolutely. maybe, and then Marquette. You Especially now without Sean Jones, they're they're yeah. they're going to be hurting. Now that hurts their depth. Yeah, right. So I, I'm glad you brought up Villanova. I gotta I gotta run it back. UConn. The only reason why I say Villanova before us because they had our number. When they come to playing, I'd, lo I'd love to play them again though. Exactly. Yeah. And then us, and then uh, the other spots. Um, that St. John team looked great, but uh, Seton Hall, we haven't played them yet. Seton Hall, Marquette, or St. John's will be that next spot. Amen. I yeah. agree. Yeah, and I think he here's the weird thing. What's that? So we rattle off six teams right there, right? Yep. Think about this. One of those teams 
is going to play Wednesday night. I know, man. <laughs> now that Providence has clearly dropped way yeah, down. Exactly. Butler's just can't get over the hump with the good teams. Right. So now you've got them. And Xavier's still, I think, in the running. But they're still, when you them. see them, well, they lost two their yeah. terrific players. Right. So think about it. Somebody's going to be playing that extra game out of those teams, which is kind of weird to think about. It's scary. Because they're probably all going to be NCAA teams. Yep. And maybe playing that extra game sometimes helps teams. That you know team, what I mean? Th th and that is going to be the sleeper. And I think it's going to be Providence. They're going to get some get back. Oh, no. Providence will be like seventh on our list. No, who is sixth then? Well, Seton Hall or St. John's. Sorry. Um, one of those teams. Yeah, sorry. One of those teams will be the Whoever's the sixth seed. There you go. They're going to get to play DePaul. There you go. Then they're going to play the third seed, which in your ranking would be us. There you go. And then we're going to have our – And uh, you sure the hell wouldn't want to be St. John's in the garden. Man, I know, bro. It's, <laughs> it's, it's happening. Like we Let's not speak that into existence. You know? <laughs> yeah, we got – Remember we talked about it. Remember we talked well, about right, it. Well, right, right. And we, we, and we do it. need to get a little bit like maybe end of January. I know not everybody plays everybody yet. True. And some teams have already played teams twice. But at least most of the teams have played one another. And we can get maybe a little better feel. Right. I kind of feel like Seton Hall's kind of had – they've had the tough games at home so far. Exactly. They, they haven't had to go to Marquette or any of that, and we have. Yeah. Um, yeah. To, uh, to our help, we got, we got to play this, DePaul just, and Georgetown on the road, right? I had this weird, like, thought. Like, maybe we spoke into the existen existence what's going to happen. <laughs> 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 oh, it's crazy, man. This well, is the best conference in America, man. for sure. Oh. Yeah, I mean – I think eventually the Big 12 will have it. You think? When they start Looks shaking like some. some see, teams. I, I, teams like Texas and Texas Tech play nobody in the non-conference. So we don't really know how good they are. Same holds true for Cincinnati and BYU. Right. We don't know how good they are. Now you all of a sudden you got Central Florida knocks off Kansas. So now you're like, wait a minute, how good are they? <laughs> I know. So I think we got to see some more games there to say, they are definitely the best. The other team, the other conference that would challenge would be uh, the SEC. SEC. The yeah. SEC's not, I don't think, as good at the top. I think they're very good in the middle. Mm. I think they're better in the middle than any other conference in the league. I can agree with when that. you go with Tennessee, uh, and obviously Tennessee or Kentucky are at the top of their league, but you get down to the Ole Misses, South Carolinas, on yeah. and on and on and on, yeah. Mississippi State. Right. Uh, they, they've got really Florida's, all those yeah. teams. So I agree. There we I go. Agree. Thanks for joining. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot. We will be back here next Wednesday night after UConn, baby. I know. Come on down. We're going to have a watch party here at Let It Fly. It will be packed. I'm going to get my regular spot, second deck, right in the middle, so the big screen's right in front of me, and it looks like I'm right at the game courtside. There you go, That's man. why I like to watch it. Right. Elevated Phil comes experience. up. Phil comes up and goes, what are you doing sitting up here by myself? I go, this is my spot. I like it right here. Exactly. It's like you're at the Let game. Let my guy live, Phil. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Josh is always awesome. Yeah. Everybody stay safe out there. We'll see you. And by the way, Special episode of Blue Jay Banner on Monday night. You're going to join me, right? Yeah, I should. The only reason why I say I should is because I'm waiting on this I baby. I know. Born. When's that happening, dude? We don't know, man. <laughs> we don't know. Absolutely January 25th, but I don't. Oh, that's a ways yet. Yeah. Yeah, but. So you got a window of about 10 days yeah. here. Well, my day-to-day -day don't seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm like, I'm always tentative, but I'm, I'm here. I'm Suck here. it up, bro. This is my God. Oh Suck it up, bro. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> All right. But anyway, you want to join in. Zach Weaver, who's not here today, is our fine producer, been our producer for two years. He's leaving us. He's going to Portland. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to have a special send-off for him, too. So uh, thanks so much. Join us on Monday at 6 p.m. If you want to come down to Let Fly and watch the show, that's great, too. But we'll, if you don't do that, we'll see you on Wednesday. See you then.